Hey everybody, my name is Joey. Thank you so much for watching today. As a church, we are wanting the voice of faith to be a life-changing message. We want to spread encouragement and spread God as much as we can. Today, we pray that you are filled with faith and filled with hope as you hear the voice of faith. Check out this message from Pastor Martin. Hello, Faith World. Welcome back to the Voice of Faith broadcast. I'm Pastor Martin Hernandez. So let's get right back into what we were discussing regarding to awakening the sleeping giant. I want you to go with me to Matthew chapter 28, verse 18 to 19. In this uh, broadcast, we're going to be talking about the how. How is this authority presented? So we're going to just cover this, and I, I want you just to pay very close attention to it. Uh, Matthew chapter 28, verse 18 to 19 says, uh, And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. So this happened right after resurrection. Jesus rose again from the dead. He has his eternal scars that are, and he is walking in total un defeated purpose because he lived this world perfect. He went to hell on your behalf by taking your sin and shame, rose again on the third day, and he also defeated all principalities and powers. Now, the first thing is this, is this, how is this authority presented? Well, Jesus bestowed this authority to the church, you and I, through his death, burial, and resurrection. The scripture we just read right now, Jesus said, all power has been given unto me. But he didn't stop there. He said, now go ye. That is the permission that he said, I have this authority. All power has been given unto me in heaven and earth. Now I'm giving it to you. Go and do something with it. It is important. It is, it is vital as Christians to understand that we have authority. Here we all, here we are all saying things like this as a local, as a body of Christ. Christians will say, well, God's in control. Christians will say, well, we're waiting on God. No, the control is in the church and God is waiting on you because he is waiting for your mouth to start to declare and to decree things because God has given you that authority. In fact, in Ephesians chapter one, uh, verse 19 the latter part of it says, or verse 19 says, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us who believe, according to the working of his mighty power, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places, far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come and hath put all things under his feet and gave, hear that word, he gave. What did he give? He gave, God gave Jesus to be the head over all things to the church. So that authority was given to Jesus. Jesus has it and he says, now I'm giving it to the church. For here on this earth, you must have need of this authority. In fact, in Luke chapter 10, verse 19, Jesus states it. He says, behold, I give, I give, I give, I give. Who's the I there? Jesus. I, Jesus, give unto you power to tread over serpents and scorpions and all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. So notice that word power in Luke chapter 10, 19 is translated in the Greek authority. So you can literally say, Jesus is saying this, behold, I give unto you authority to tread over serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. Not just some, not half, but all of it. And then he says this, and nothing, 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 nothing shall by any means hurt you. In fact, you could cut the word nothing in half. No thing. There's not a thing in this world that can hurt you unless you let it. That's how much authority you have that Jesus gave to you. So another how is this. The authority of Jesus Christ is positional. In 1 John chapter 5, verse 4 through 5 says this, 
For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Who is he that overcometh the world? But he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God. It, those of you that are watching, do you believe that Jesus is the Son of God? If the answer is yes, this is regarding to you. You are an overcomer. The moment you accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, God made you an overcomer. Who is he that overcometh the world? But he that believes that Jesus is the Son of God. Say that out loud with me. Say, I am an overcomer because I believe that Jesus is the Son of God. That's simple. I'm not asking you to do 4,000 or 400 spiritual push-ups. I'm not asking you to, uh, to, that, that you have to try to be so good and try to present yourself so good. No, you just have to simply believe that Jesus is the Son of God. And at that moment, God makes you an overcomer. You have overcoming faith living on the inside of you. And it wants to overcome all circumstances in your life. And in fact, let's piggyback on that one. In Revelation chapter 3, verse 21 to 22, Jesus says this, To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame and am set down with my Father in his throne. He that has an ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. Can you believe that? Because I do, and you ought to too. Because the Bible says... Those that overcome are those that believe in Jesus, right? We read that in 1 John chapter 5. Now over here, Jesus is saying in Revelation chapter 3, what we just read, to he that overcometh. Who's that? That's you and that's me. The Christians, the ones that believe in Jesus, the ones that follow Jesus. This is regarding to you. To he that overcometh, I will grant him to sit in my throne and to sit with me. You know, the last broadcast, we talked about going over the Ephesian prayers. If you go down to Ephesians chapter 2, the Bible says we've been buried together with Him, we've been risen together with Him, and we sit together with Him. Jesus has a seat with you, or I should say Jesus has an available seat. It's at the right hand of the Father, and that's where He's seated, and that's where you're seated. And the Bible says, even... As I also overcame, you can overcome because you are now an overcomer. There is absolutely nothing that you're going through that Jesus hasn't overcome. He has already overcame everything. He has already overcame the sickness that you're battling with, the disease that you're struggling with, the financial hardship. Jesus overcame it. And there's a throne waiting for you. It has your name on it. Just sit down because that's where he's at. In fact, in Hebrews chapter 2, I'm going to read this in the Amplified Classic. The Bible says that uh, in verse 5, For it was not to the angels that God subjected the habitable world of the future of which we are speaking. It has been solemnly and earnestly said in a certain place, What is man? that you are mindful of him or the son of man that you are graciously and helpfully care for and visit and look after him. For some little time you have ranked him lower than an inferior to the angels. You have crowned him with glory and honor and set him over the works of your hands. For you have put everything in subjection under his feet. Now in putting everything in subjection to man, he left nothing outside of man's control. But at present, we do not yet see all things subjected to him, man, but we are able to see Jesus. And so I want you to notice that, you know, people will say, what is man? Who is man to God? Man was created in the image and likeness of God, but yet he's lower than the angels. Religious people will say, well, you know, see right there, you know, angels are greater than you. No, they're not. That word angels there, when you really study it out, it, you know, in Hebrews chapter, uh, what we just read in Hebrews chapter 2, it's quoted over there in Psalms, in the book of Psalms, chapter 8. That word angels there is translated Elohim. In other words, what is man? He's lower than Elohim. In other words, God is supreme. The one right after him is you and I, 
created in his likeness, created in his very image. Angels are subject to us. They're heirs of salvation. They work for us and they're hearkening to what you say. But if you're not saying the voice of faith, then they can't work because they only operate what you declare in this word. And so it's important what you say. God left nothing out of man's control. The control is in your hands. Well, God's in control. We'll just have to wait to see what God's going to do next. Honey, He already did everything 2,000 years ago. 2,000 years ago on Calvary's cross. And now the control has been given to the church. And so this, is, this position that we're in in Christ, we have to constantly see Jesus as the author and finisher of our faith. When we rise up in in our authority, we ought to see Jesus in the midst of our declaration. Uh, the last part of this, of this broadcast is that the authority is enforced. Let's talk a little bit about that. It's enforced. Ecclesiastes chapter 8 verse 4 says, Where the word of a king is, there is power. And who may say unto him, What doest thou? We've been made kings and priests, according to Revelation chapter 1 verse 6, he is the king of kings. Jesus is the king of kings. Who's the kings that's referring to? You and I. Where the word of a king is, there's power. In fact, in uh, Psalms 107, verses 1 through 2, says, O oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom he hath redeemed from the hand of the enemy. You have been redeemed from the hand of the enemy. You have been redeemed because Jesus redeemed you from the hand of the enemy. And he redeemed you into this everlasting fellowship with God. And whatever the redeemed says is so. So you must say something. According to his word, if your body's sick, say, I am whole. And it is so. When your finances aren't working, say that all your needs are met according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. And guess what? It is so. Let the redeemed of the Lord, that's you, say so. You have to let it. If you recall the Roman centurion, when he asked Jesus to come and heal his servant, Jesus wanted to go heal the servant and, 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 the, and the centurion said, whoa, 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 no, no, don't, don't, you can't come to my house. I'm not worthy to be having you come to my house. But just say the word because I'm a man of authority. I understand how this rolls, Jesus. All you have to do is just say the word and Jesus is like, holy smokes, he gets it. This dude understands what, 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 what kingdom principles are all about and that is using your authority. And he called that action a man of great faith. We're all looking for what great faith looks like. It's a relationship to know that when I say something, my father backs it up. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. And I'll close with this. John chapter 14, verse 13 to 14 says, And whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. You know, for, time, for, for, for many years, people have interpreted this scripture as a prayer scripture. It's not. It's a declaration. The word ask there in the Greek is translated demand. So you could literally say whatsoever you shall demand in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you shall ask or demand anything in my name, I will do it. What you demand according to the word of God, God will do it. If it doesn't line up with the word of God and you want it changed, whatever you demand... By using your authority, it is so. And so I encourage you to use that authority by using the name of Jesus. Philippians chapter 2 talks about that, that God has given Jesus a name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord. So sicknesses and diseases, poverty, lack, frustration and anger and fear and anxiety and addictions, all these things are just names and they are subjected when the church rises up this is the year of the uprising and demand change by declaring that Jesus is the answer. And so just remember, how does this authority look? How does it look like? It's quite simple. The authority of Jesus Christ has been bestowed. The authority of Jesus Christ is positional and the authority of Jesus Christ is enforced. 
And so I encourage you to keep listening to this broadcast and let faith rise up and now use this authority. And remember, Jesus is your identity and there's nothing that is able to separate that truth in Jesus' name. God bless you, everybody. We love you. Thank you so much for watching today. As you know, with everything happening today, it is vital that Faith World is able to continue to spread Jesus. We cannot do this without you, the church. So at the end of each video, we always wanna give you an opportunity to give so that you can be blessed. The ways that you can give are on the screen. Also, if you need prayer, please email, message us, or call the church so that we can pray with you. Thank you so much for joining us today. We will see you tomorrow. But before you go, here are some announcements to keep you informed with what's going on at Faith World Church. Hey church, thank you so much for joining us today. My name is Casey and these are your church announcements. If you were a first time guest, we would like you to fill out our welcome card so that we can give you more information about our church. There are ushers in the aisle right now and if you could simply raise your hand at this time, they'll give you a brochure. If you fill out that card and after the service, drop it off at our visitor cart in the welcome home area, there someone will greet you, answer any questions, and give you a special gift. If you're looking for a home church, join the Faith World family. We're having a great time serving and learning about the life that we have in Christ. So if you don't have a church family, we say to you, welcome home. Now let's silence our cell phones and find out what's going on at church. Be a part of what God is doing in our city by participating in our Outreach Day on July 11th and July 25th from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. at our Hemet Campus parking lot. We will be handing out free groceries to the people in our community, and if you'd like to help bag or distribute groceries, please call the church and somebody will get back with you. Men's Retreat is right around the corner. It's going to be August 24th through 27th at Convict Lake. The cost is $175, which includes all meals and lodging. Enjoy the great outdoors, fun activity, and great fellowship. Make sure to register by July 26th. Our back to school outreach is coming up soon. This year we're going to combine our back to school outreach with our grocery outreach on July 25th. In addition to free food, we'll be giving away backpacks filled with school supplies to families with elementary age children. Additional volunteers will be needed on this day. So if you would like to volunteer, please sign up at our info cart or sign up online. Church, we have a new app. Make sure to download yours today by searching your app store for the Church Center app. Once you download yours, you can register for Faith World Church in Hemet. With this new app, you can give and see everything that is going on at Faith World Church. Ladies, it is time to register for this year's Courageous Conference 2020. It's going to be October 15th through 17th in beautiful Lake Arrowhead. The cost is going to be $170, which includes all meals. Register in the lobby or online. The deadline is going to be on October 4th. We will be updating you to our COVID-19 guidelines for this day, but we are so excited for this very special conference, so make sure not to delay your registration. Faith World ladies, get ready for Girls' Night Out. It's gonna be on August 18th, and it will be a fun night of fellowship, dinner, giveaways, and powerful teaching from a special guest, Reverend Elaine Croucher. This will be held at our Hammock campus, and it kicks off at 6.30 p.m., and you must pre-register in the lobby or online. The cost is $10 and registration ends on Sunday, August 9th. Hey, Faith World, you can now purchase all of our official Faith World apparel online at our website, faithworld.church. You can buy the new hats, the new shirts, and also all of the men's ministry Elevate hats and shirts on there as well. Make sure to get yours today. Thank you so much for being with us today. Make sure to follow us on our Instagram and join our other online broadcasts and services that we have throughout the week on our YouTube channel and our Facebook. You can also continue to sow financial seed by giving on the church app and our text to give system. Thank you so much for being with us today and have a blessed week.